Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Salalipop and this right behind me is the brand new 2022 Trek Excalibur 8. Now those of you who follow my channel will know that I've already made a video on this very bike, but in that video I really just compared the differences between the 2021 Excalibur 8 and this 2022 model to show you what's just been upgraded and changed on the last year's bike to make this brand new one for 2022. So therefore in this video I'm going to be focusing on all the things I might have missed in that previous video um, since I did not have that bike with me in person like I do now. So there's a lot of frame details and other key things that I might have glanced over in that previous video so I'll cover all those now and I'm also just going to be showing you some nice shots of the bike and giving you a better uh, glimpse of what this new color scheme is like and kind of just how the bike looks with all of these parts on it and then later on in the video I am also going to be weighing it on a scale to see exactly how much it weighs in a size extra large because that's this one and then um, at the very end I will also be giving it a quick test ride on the road since I don't want to get it too dirt dirty by going on a trail or anything like that and that's just going to give me my initial ride impressions on the Excalibur 8. But before we get too far into this video I do want to show a couple pictures of a 2022 Trek Marlin 4 that I recently found at my Trek shop in Trek Sacramento and all of these pictures are going to be on my Instagram at tolollipop underscore mtb and I also have pictures of a lot of other 2022 Trek bikes like the Marlin 7, the Marlin 6, the Marlin 5s so definitely check out my Instagram if you want to see some more content on those since I don't always have time to make a full video on those bikes. So without further ado let's get into the video and start talking about the specifications and all the new stuff for 2022. And boom, there is the brand new 2022 Trek Excalibur 8 in a size extra large in the color crystal white with these nice kind of holographic red accents. I'm going to kind of just walk around the bike in the shade here to show you how that changes as you go along the bike. It's definitely a metallic red and in my opinion it looks pretty stunning. It's the same color that's on the 2021 uh, Trek Pro Caliber 9.8. In terms of some frame differences that I did not notice in my previous video, one is the Excalibur font. So now as you can see it's in all caps and it does not have a dash between the X and the C as it did on the 2021 model. And of course down here we have the Alpha Gold Aluminum uh, logo right there as well as a little hole covering for a front derailleur cable. Um, which would you know just go on right here if you do want a front derailleur obviously this bike has a one by drivetrain so only one chain ring in the front and we'll talk about the uh, updates and changes in a second I'm going to just quickly glance over the frame details so one thing you'll notice on every single Excalibur bike is this Excalibur logo on the C-tube right there so that's what it looks like it has some little uh, spark like line things just to make it stand out a little bit but that's how you know you have an Excalibur if you have that logo on the back, at least for the newer models. And then the Dior shifter that, that is new for this bike for 2022 actually has a bit of a holographic tint to it. So as you move around the shifter, you can see it kind of change color a little bit. So just another nice thing and a nice feature um, that I was not able to discern from the images in my previous video. All right, so now let's talk about some key details on this bike, some of which I may have already covered in my previous video, but um, just for the sake of this video, I will mention that the suspension fork is the same fork that we saw on the 2021 Excalibur 8. So it is the RockShox Judy SL air fork, uh, which has a tapered uh, steer, as well as a boost 110 spacing in the front with this nice quick release through axle. So it is a through axle, but it just has this quick release uh, from RockShox on it, which makes it easier to remove, which I think is pretty nice. Um, and obviously you can see the Judy logo on the top of the fork right there. So it is a nice suspension fork. It has 100 millimeters of suspension travel since this is a cross-country focused uh, mountain bike. And this bike does still have the 2021 bikes Bond Traeger Covey TLR rims. So you can see that right there labeled Covey TLR. So these are tubeless ready rims, but a big difference for 2022 is actually to the tires. So the 2021 Excalibur 8 actually used Bontrager XR3 comp tires, which were not tubeless ready. They were 30 TPI, um, pretty generic tires right there for cross country. But these ones have upgraded to obviously the Maxxis brand with that nice Maxxis logo in white. But they are the Ardent Race tires, which are 60 TPI, tubeless ready, and 2.35 inches wide in the front. And then in the rear, we actually also have 2.35 inches wide. 
So these are very similar tires to what are on the Trek Marlin 8 for 2021 and 2022, um, but they are 2.35 inches wide in the front and the rear, which is very nice. It's a full tubeless setup for this year as well, which is really nice to see since last year, this bike did come with inner tubes, but now it is fully tubeless setup from the factory. So these wheels are actually tubeless right now and they will be tubeless when you buy this bike from any Trek store or any authorized Trek dealer. But now it's definitely time to talk about the biggest change from 2021 to this bike, which is the drivetrain. So last year's Excalibur 8 used a full SRAM SX Eagle 1x12 drivetrain, which is SRAM's entry-level drivetrain for mountain biking. It's their least expensive one, it's their heaviest one. There are a few issues with it in terms of like the derailleur not being the best quality and things like that, just in general. While this drivetrain is mainly a Shimano Dior 1x12, which is more comparable to the SRAM NX Eagle, which is a level above the SX. So that's very nice to see. We have a Shimano Dior crankset in the front, which has uh, 30 teeth, so it's a 30 teeth crankset. And then we also have a 10 to 51 tooth cassette in the rear, so a wider range than on the last year's model, which was an 11 to 50 tooth SX Eagle cassette. So this one has a wider range, has an easier gear for going uh, uphill, as well as a harder gear for pedaling uh, faster, essentially. And then the derailleur is an even bigger upgrade. It is actually a Shimano Dior XT derailleur, as you can see here. And that one does have a clutch mechanism right there, um, which we can engage right here. And then that'll add tension to the chain to make sure um, there's less chain noise, less chance of the chain falling off the front crankset or falling or skipping gears in the rear cassette. And um, this is one level above the Shimano Dior 12-speed rear derailleur, so it's even better. It's more comparable to the SRAM GX Eagle derailleur, so that's a very nice upgrade to see. And then we can move on up to the Shimano Dior 12-speed shifter. And what's nice about this shifter is that you can click uh, once to go up a gear to an easier gear, or you can keep going and do it twice. So you have two clicks to easily go to a, an easier gear. And then you can also go down by pushing with your thumb or by pushing with your finger. So it's nice, you have a lot of different options here and they're really ergonomic and it feels nice to shift and it gives a good uh, amount of feedback. And then one other thing I'll mention that I did not talk about in that previous video was that the grips we're seeing on the 2022, any Trek bikes in 2022 are a little bit different. They uh, are a bit more grippy. I kind of like them better than what Bond Trigger has been producing in the past. Um, so these are some nice grips. It might be just due to the bike shortage since we're, we are not seeing that on the official Trek website yet, but they are some nice grips. So if you do get these on your bike, it's gonna be totally fine and work really well. And this bike is still coming with that same Shimano MT200 brake set that we see on a lot of Trek bikes. Um, at around this price point and a little bit below this price point as well. So they're just generic two piston brakes from Shimano that work fine for cross country. And in my opinion, that's probably one of the only things that really requires an upgrade on this bike if you were to get it um, with this frame and with this drivetrain and everything. I think it's a pretty good package. Just the one thing you might wanna consider upgrading in the future is probably gonna be those brakes. Since you do already have the tubeless setup with the wheels, you have a really nice drivetrain that's gonna work well and it's gonna be really reliable. You have nice grips on there. You got a completely fine saddle and seat post and stem and all that other, all those other finishing components there. Um, nice wide handlebar for the XL size. It's 750 millimeters wide, I believe. And you got the tapered head tube. You got a nice suspension fork that um, could be upgraded as well, but it's pretty good for uh, just starting out on this bike. But yeah, the brakes are probably the only thing I have a minor complaint about. Um, it does have a 180 millimeter rotor in the front in this XL size and then a 160 in the rear still. And of course the frame has not been updated or upgraded since 2021. So it still has the Boost 141 with a quick release axle in the rear instead of Boost 148 spacing with a through axle, which is what a lot of people seem to be preferring for uh, mountain biking these days. So that's another thing that could be better but in my opinion it's it has some great upgrades for 2022. all right now a lot of you guys in my trek marlin 8 in person review video got pretty mad that i didn't talk about an rx7 that was parked on the side of the street so now we're going to talk about how nice the excalibur looks next to this beautiful miata that is owned by my manager at trek <laughs> and real quick here is the other side of the bike just in case you wanted to see it definitely looks really nice in this color and in the sunlight. And you know what, I'll actually go out in the sun right now and just show you what it looks like 
since this white paint is a little bit glossy as well and obviously the holographic red it looks pretty good in the sun so let's go check that out all right so here's kind of what the bike looks like in the sunlight i'll kind of move closer to it so you can kind of see that shiny effect not sure if it's going to come up on camera that well but it definitely looks really nice um, and bright and of course the red itself is very vibrant all right so now it is finally time to weigh this bike in a size extra large i'll throw up the value on the screen right now but as you can see it's not too light of a bike it's around 30 pounds which is okay for cross country um this bike is you know obviously still an extra large frame so it is going to be heavier than the medium frame that trek normally weighs when they give those weights on the website so it's probably going to be around 29 pounds in reality for most riders but this is an XL and if you did want to know what an XL weighed that's what it weighs. So now let's get out and give it a quick test ride and I'll kind of give my initial thoughts on the bike right now. All right test riding the 2022 Excalibur 8 in a size extra large. So this bike definitely feels pretty big. <laughs> so first off we have the drivetrain which is the immediate most noticeable difference. It's definitely a lot better in my opinion. The SRAM SX Eagle is a good drivetrain but um, this one in my opinion is just better shifting is very smooth very quick and it gives you a nice feedback when you shift and it's a fairly fast bike i'm not feeling like a crazy amount of speed right now and it has that lockout on the fork too to make it fully rigid. That works pretty well. And then we have it open. Kind of hop off this curb here. It's a strong frame. The tapered head tube definitely helps and the through axle in the front. So it can take some good hits in the front for sure. But it is an overall good bike and that's pretty much it for my thoughts on this one. There aren't too many changes, but I really just wanted to show off this bike for Woo. but I really just want to show off this bike on YouTube since I haven't really seen any other videos of it and I haven't really seen any in person that much either so it was pretty lucky to see one this soon especially since it was basically just released but that is it for this video thank you all so 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 much for watching and as always remember to leave any questions or suggestions or anything like that in the comments down below since i do read every single one of them but besides that i hope you all had a great time watching this video and remember to keep biking